Hey y'all, Data Guy here. <laughs> and today I wanted to make a video just showing you how you can use Databricks to power your ML workflows. Um, so Databricks, as you might know, is a managed you know, Spark environment at its most level or most basic level where you, know, you can just write your uh, Python scripts to perform whatever, you know, PySpark, so not real python but it, it's basically the same um obviously you don't have to make a difference you can't just copy and paste python code but this will allow you to you know perform complex machine learning workflows using sparks really fast distributed computing um, so this is a great option you know if you're working with really large data sets uh, and you need to harness the power of spark but you don't want to bother with self-managing it and you just kind of want to write your notebooks and have them run on a uh, scalable infrastructure so today that's exactly what i'm going to show you so essentially what we're going to be doing here is taking and let me just create a new notebook um, so we're going to be creating a new um, ML pipeline that is going to take some customer analytics data, process it, and then tell us, hey, what is uh, the credit score based on their uh, previous information? So once that, we pull up the customer analytics data, so you can actually see what it looks like, because it's always important before you're doing machine learning to understand what your data looks like. So here we have this displayed in Apple numbers. Um, and if anyone has a better way to visualize like CSV data sets, locally please tell me because i don't know why apple numbers is just like the worst stupidest piece of garbage that has ever existed but it is and i hate it so much um uh, but here we're just using it to uh, look at this data that we're going to use for our ml workflow so here we have our credit score we have geography gender um you know different customer characteristics we have some columns that we're going to drop that because we don't, they're not super accurate or actually this is the post clean data but this is the end result so you'll see within our ml workflow how we're going to generate this data um, so if we go into back to our ml pipeline in databricks over here the first thing we're going to need to do is I've, I've stored that data in a postgres database so whenever you are working with spark you're going to need to actually configure the um direct connection to your Postgres database in the code. There's no like connection management UI within Databricks, which is why Airflow is a great option to layer on top of this um, to actually manage these workflows and provide the connections um, and you know, move data into Databricks because Databricks is really annoying when moving data in and out. Um, if you haven't seen already, look at the videos you've already created kind of comparing Airflow and Databricks. Um, so the first thing you need to do is define a bunch of different variables. So you're going to need your driver. You're going to need your uh, host, which is going to be something like, you know, I'm running it on Azure. Um, and so it's going to be Azure database dot uh, demo dot do not disturb or sorry. But if you ever work with setting a Postgres connection, it's going to look pretty much exactly like that. Um, and then just use it to build a URL that has your port, host, uh, database name. And then one thing you can do to test it, just kind of a cool little utility, um, is you can use this little method here, um, run it, and then this will actually tell you if your connection was successful or not. Um, and I'll show you all this working in a second. I just don't want to put my actual credentials up here just yet. Uh, but yeah, this is how you can see, hey, does this connection actually work? Um, so then the way you'll interact with it in all subsequent cells um, is by using Spark. So Spark by default comes built in with a lot of the regular libraries in Databricks. Sorry, not regular Spark, but in Databricks, it comes pre-built with a lot of the different files you'll need um, or different you know libraries and things you'll need to actually um, interact with your data. So Obviously, if it doesn't, you'll need to go install them on your compute. Um, and so, sorry, I was struggling around with the adding a new cell down there. Um, but if you had a compute, the way you'll add new libraries is just by going in this and then install new um, and then go to PyPy. Um, and then here, actually, Maven, what is it? Yes, yeah, so you can search packages under Maven um, and just find whatever packages you need. Um, so pandas, let's say. It's in here or AWS. 
And so here, you know, you just have like all the different AWS packages you need if you want to interact with the AWS services. Um, so just wanted to show you how to do that because that also kept me hung up for a bit when I was trying to work with this. Um, so then going back into our ML pipeline, our second cell where we're actually gonna interact with uh, Spark or use Spark to interact with Postgres. So all of your Spark operations, you're going to need to use or operations where you interact with other systems, you need to use, tell Spark to interact with it. So that's why you need this Postgres driver, all the connection details, and then like format all of this to then call out through Spark by using spark.read to um, call out to that table, read it in, and then you know load it um, and store it as a remote table here. And this will automatically store it as a uh, PySpark data frame. Um, so super convenient uh, there as well. So you don't actually you can just import it directly in as a data frame. So now that we've got our remote table all set up, all ready to go, uh, we are going to start doing some real ML work. Um, so here we're going to uh, create a cell. We're going to import from PySpark. So again, these are some of the default packages within PySpark. Um, so string index, vector assembler, min max scale are just to pre-process our data. Um, and then in PySpark, you have this concept of like a pipeline that's going to kind of act as like your full encompassing object for all the steps of your machine learning cycle from you know feature engineering to model creation to generating predictions from that model uh, then we're also going to train test split just to easily split our data without manually needing to manually do it and good old pandas as pd so then uh, again we've initialized this as a remote table using spark so that's how we'll just reference it within here um, so what we're going to do now is do our feature engineering. So here, just to do all of our feature engineering after we read the data in, we actually don't even need to read the data in because it's already ready in Spark. Um, but if you re so you'll have to do this all in the same notebook. So otherwise, if you're just you know read the data frame in and you want to use it on the notebook, you have to store it either within you know an intermediary location or the local Databricks file store. So just want to keep in mind. But this is all in the same notebook, so we're all good on that front. Here, I'm just telling you to drop uh, satisfaction score, card type, point earned, just because it's not relevant to their credit score. Um, it might actually be, but uh, this is just some variables I took out. And here we have remote table, drop, those columns of drops, we're dropping them from our remote table, just with that list. Um, and then handling any missing uh, values, so dropping any null values. We have our categorical columns here for geography and gender. So just different categories for it to group the data. Uh, then it's doing string indexing for all of our string features for our categorical columns. Again, here we have, um, so indexing, hey, uh, Africa is two, Southeast Asia is three. Um, and instead of having to call Southeast Asia and uh, Africa, it just knows, hey, this is just index one or two and three. Um, then we have also numerical columns, scaling them, so using vector assembler for combining them, and then running min-max for feature uh, scaling for feature scaling to make sure it's all uh, kind of condensed on a common scale so the outliers don't affect the data, the data too much. Next, after that, um, we will create a pipeline for all of our tasks. So here we are going to uh, have this pipeline here to, you know, just assemble our data um, or to you know, assemble our kind of our ML object, if you will. Uh, we have our transform data frame where we're going to fit that remote table, transform it um, to or the pipeline to fit that remote data frame um, to, you know, obviously fit the data frame or so the pipeline knows the format of the data. Then selecting our features um, and target variables. So we're looking for all the different features that we already defined uh, to find our credit score, uh, converting it to a pandas data frame for scikit compatibility, and then splitting our data set into training and testing sets for the eventual um, actual machine learning job. So and stay here just to kind of split up, make it more readable. Just wanted to end with creating all these different data sets. And then in our next task, what we'll do is do our actual ML, our actual, actual ML. So here we're importing the random forest regressor, uh, scikit learn metrics, numpy, pandas, all the usual suspects for uh, Python ML. And then we're going to create a random forest regressor model. So here we have our random forest regressor and estimators random state 42, training the model um, on our training data and then generating predictions on our test data set. So we have you know split previously up here, predicting being the model.fit with the training data and then predicting, or sorry, yeah, generating our predictions 
via the training data for our test data. Um, then it's going to evaluate the model. Um, so here it's going to uh, print out all of the different metrics of, hey, is this accurate or not? But we don't want to want to see metrics. We want to see the actual predictions. So then I'm also going to create a new results data frame, which has the actual credit score and predicted credit score uh, right side by side. And then I'm just resetting the index to avoid any index related issues. And boom, we have uh, our results data frame, no index, which is going to compare our predictions to our actual uh, test values and then printing that out. And so if I go and show you now all this actually running, so if you want to just, you'll need to hit run all because it's going to need to every, for every run, you'll need to generate the data. So this previous task I relies on this, this task relies on this previous task having already run. So just something to keep in mind and you'll have to have a spark cluster available to run it. Um, but if, I, if we look at what this looks like actually in action here, you can see we have, you know, our mode table being read in. I have a preview message here. Just so you can see it's that same data I just showed you earlier. Um, and then we have our feature engineering data set, and you'll see this actually will use MLflow automatically for our, our um, ML jobs. Uh, so Spark just kind of naturally knows to use that in the hood because we're using um, the PySpark ML feature. And so now we have our transform data frame. So it'll show us what they are in the logs, um, what they look like. Um, our final data frame, which is scale features and credit score. So the second one's just encompassing the different uh, features of our data set. And then down here, we have our actual ML job and its results. So if we look at all of our accuracy scores, not super amazing, our R squared of 64, this would definitely not fly muster. And then we can look in our actual credit score versus predicted credit score. Maybe random force wasn't the right one. Uh, these predictions are pretty terrible uh, on, you know, it's like 30 off. Oh, okay. yeah, I don't know. Not that great. Um, middle middle of the road model, and so you know you can keep running this, you can keep training it, uh, or you know tweaking. Maybe use a different uh, data set, or sorry, different regressor model. And here you just swap out random forest regressor for you know uh, linear regression, or oh, really whatever you want. Um, any model you want. It's super flexible. Um, really encourage you just to go check this out um, and try running your ML on some really, really large data sets because it does complete it relatively quickly um, compared to, you know, just like running it on your local machine or via a Python script. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, let me know in the comments. If you did, also let me know in the comments. I thrive on both forms of feedback. Um, and above all else, have a great rest of your day. Data guy out. Peace.